Are you tired of having a ton of paper clutter around your house that you have to sort and organize in order to make a portfolio for your kiddos each year? Well, I'm here to tell you there's a better way using Google Drive, and I'm gonna show you how to do it, so stick around. Before we get started, I just wanted to make sure that you go and check your own state's portfolio requirements, and you can do that at hslda.org. In this video, I'm not gonna be going over any specific requirements on what you need in your portfolio, but just kind of a step-by-step -step on how to set it up and how to make it useful for you. All you need to make a digital portfolio is going to be Google Drive. Now to use Google Drive, you're going to need a Google account. Once you have a Google account, you have access to Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Drive, and various other Google applications. You could also do the same method by just creating folders on a laptop or computer, but by having it all on Google Drive, no matter where you go, what device you're using, you will be able to easily put all of your kids' uh, digital documents into it from anywhere. So if you have a Google account, great. If you don't, go set one up, it is free and then let's get started. Once you have your Google account, we're gonna get into Drive, and you can do this on your computer or your phone. So on your phone, you just need to download the Google Drive app and then open it up. Once you're in Google Drive, you're going to create a folder. So all you're gonna do is you should see a little plus button in the bottom right-hand corner. You select that and then you're gonna click Folder. So I've already created the folder and I titled, titled it Family Portfolios. So in there, you can create different folders for each student. That's how I prefer to do it, is to just make sure each student has their own folder. Um, you could also separate it out by year. I also put in here a folder for yearly records. So if you have to keep attendance or any other documents, uh, report cards, or anything for your students, you can stick it all in that folder as well and make all of that digital. So once you create a student in there, you can start sticking everything, but I also like to separate it out by year or grade. Now, how do we get a sample such as a narrative rough draft writing that my son did? So what you're going to do is you are going to open up Drive, find that folder of your student, and then select the grade that they're in. And then you are gonna go ahead and hit that plus button, and then you're going to use the camera. And so all you have to do is select a picture um, I just like to make sure you have good lighting. You take a picture and then you, if you don't like it, you can click retake. If you do like the way it came out, it's not blurry or anything, you just say use photo. It's going to upload that document straight into the Google Drive folder where you want it to go. So you could also do this by just taking pictures and then selecting them from your phone by using that plus button. So for here, you can click um, upload instead when, and then you can go to your photos and videos and then you can select multiple and then drop them all in at once. Um, but for me, it's just easier if I see something my kiddo has done before they go show it to family members or put it away in a drawer somewhere, I snag a picture of it, that way I know I have it. And I like to just open it up and put it exactly where it is because then I don't have to worry about going back and doing anything later. Another great aspect about using Google Drive rather than just having paper documents is you can upload videos to Google Drive. So I like to get little short clips of my kiddos playing their musical instrument or I even like to have them read like a 30 second passage at the beginning of the year and then do one at the end to really see their progress. Because for students, they're gonna be able to see like, wow, I was just reading like short sentences and it took me forever and now I can read a whole paragraph in 30 seconds. So it's really fun for them to see and you can have videos so you can include whatever you want. They can be doing a science experiment and you can have a short video instead of having to worry about just getting a picture and sticking it, sticking it in there, you'll have videos. This is also great for larger art projects or even 3D art projects. You can't really store that or keep that in a file folder portfolio, but you can take some pictures of it and then stick it in Google Drive and now you've got that sample forever. As your children get older, they can even type up some of their samples if you're doing some sort of writing sample. And as they get older, you could create them a Google account and then they can even drop it into that drive folder on their own because you can utilize sharing 
Um, and I'm not going to get into all of that, but if you do use Google, you can share things between Google users. So you can share that folder with your student. And then when they create things, they can also, as they get older, help put things into their own portfolio so that you don't have to worry about it. Now, lastly, if you're worried about your portfolios being on Google Drive and maybe you don't have enough storage on Google Drive for the free version, you can always download a backup onto your physical computer. So what I have done before is once I create their portfolios each year, I will then go in and download the entire folder and save it onto my computer and or hard drive. So that way you not only have it in Google Drive, but you know you have a backup on your own personal computer. That's basically it. Yes, it can take a little while to learn how to do this and to remember to take those pictures. But once you get in the habit of doing it, it makes portfolios so simple because you don't have to worry about all that paper clutter everywhere and organizing it at a later date. You can organize it right there in the moment and move on. Now, I will admit there are some times where I still have a turn in box. So when my kiddos finishes an assignment, if I don't know if I want to use it as a sample yet, I tell them stick it in the turn in box like this isn't that many papers, but I like to just have it on hand so that if I do kind of start to get towards like the end of the semester or something and I'm like, oh, I didn't get anything really that great for their history. I'll kind of look through the turn in box and go, oh, this would make a good sample. So I have them just turn everything in. And once I know that I have all the samples I need, I just throw away everything in the basket. So are you going to try out some digital portfolios to make your life so much easier? Or are you still someone that likes to stick with that paper approach? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to get more homeschool content just like this. See you next time.